Hey, what's up guys, Rev here. So it's been a tough week for Niji Sanji. They recently suspended their VTuber talent Zion, and only a day later, Vox Akuma went on an indefinite hiatus for personal reasons, and now things seem to have gotten even worse. But this time, Niji Sanji and their management, Any Color, have nobody but themselves to blame for what's happening next. Earlier this morning, the YouTuber Kyo made this tweet stating that Niji Sanji had filed 10 copyright takedowns of his videos covering drama involving Niji Sanji and its members, where they curiously left up his videos reporting on more benign stuff like updates regarding the agency. Obviously, this is a very concerning situation. It's not dramatic to say that these actions are an attempt by Niji Sanji to abuse the YouTube copyright system to remove fair use videos that might shine a negative light on their agency and talents. And we'll talk more about what kind of a precedent this sets, but I also want to spend some time talking about the YouTube copyright system since I fought off many false copyright strikes made against my channel in the past, and I want to explain how all of this happened, what people like Kyo should do next, and why all of this is such a big deal. So I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with our resident bunny boy Kyo. His channel has quickly risen over the past year or two, uploading videos covering news and drama from within the VTuber community, including developments regarding talents from agencies like Niji Sanji. So here's his tweet announcing all of this made earlier this morning. You can see all the takedowns, the videos are completely off of YouTube. And the quote retweets, by the way, are filled with all kinds of spurgs who are celebrating this as some sort of a victory. Now, Kyo has his own antis, but there's also a bunch of the more toxic Niji Sanji fans celebrating this because they don't like seeing someone like Kyo reporting on negative things referring to their favorite Niji Sanji talents. Now, at this point, he had had two strikes on his channel, but as I was getting ready to record this video, he reported that they copyright struck another 10 videos on his channel involving Niji Sanji-related drama, leading to a whopping four copyright strikes against his channel. And if you guys know, three strikes and your channel is terminated. Now, luckily for him, there is a grace period before your channel is actually terminated. There's seven days to resolve that additional two strikes in his case before he's terminated. And he can still upload, which is kind of the good thing. Community guideline strikes actually prevent you from uploading for one to two weeks. But copyright strikes, you still retain the ability to upload. So I'm, I'm sure he's going to release something about this and I'll be on standby for that. But... Here's the thing. The first question that always comes up in this situation is that was this actually Niji Sanji who made these takedowns? Because people have impersonated agencies like Niji Sanji in the past. From what Kyo has said and the emails connected to these takedowns, it appears that it is 100% clear that it is Niji Sanji and their management, any color, who are making these takedowns. So... It's worth mentioning that it does happen. People do impersonate these companies because shocked Pikachu face, uh, the YouTube copyright system is very flawed. Basically, anyone can file a copyright strike against your channel, regardless of whether they own the content or not. I mean, you'll be able to work through that process and get rid of the strikes, but it's still annoying. And a lot of people, the more toxic fans from various VTuber agencies, have impersonated the companies and filed strikes against channels they don't like because once again they're talking about talents in a negative way so this leads the question here because they took down videos involving drama circulating to their agency niji sanji this is a very targeted thing they obviously targeted kyo in this situation and why him specifically not quite sure because there's other dozens of channels out there that cover VTuber related drama and news who are completely untouched. Kyo's the only one who's reporting this right now. And it makes you think like channels like False ID, who covers virtually the same topics in the same way, using very similar thumbnails and titles, and yet he's up and running. And even my own channel, I've covered plenty of Niji Sanji stuff over the years. Like, what am I next? It just seems like this was obviously targeting Kyo for whatever reason. And like I said, he's got four strikes at the moment. He's got one week. So time 
time is ticking for him to get a remedy to all this. Now, the first thing that happens with copyright is they recommend you reach out to the claimant. In this case, Niji Sanji in any color. I recommend anyone in the situation to at least attempt that. It virtually never works, but you know what? It's worth a shot. Who knows? Because this is a very bad look for Niji Sanji. Like, yes, some of the rabid fans might be celebrating this, but to anybody who's objective here, you know how terrible of a precedent this is because they are clearly abusing the copyright system to make any of these things happen. So we're going to go into like the actual process here. And of course, we have to address the fact that this is fair use in the first place. Everything he's doing here is quintessential fair use. Here's the standards that YouTube uses uh, as a kind of boilerplate here. And it's based on U.S. law. And it's very straightforward. You can pause and read for yourself. But what he does is transformative coverage of things that Niji Sanji does. And that includes clips he might use or just tweets and other public information. He is not someone like uh, other examples where he's using past life info or private information and slandering them. He's just covering things that happen. And, and Kyo, from my own experience watching his content, he is very objective. He doesn't come in saying, oh, Niji Sanji bad because X, Y, and Z happened with their talents. He just reports, okay, VTuber from the agency made this tweet. People got mad. It's not really much of an opinion, and it's not certainly not slander by any definition. And the people barking in the quote retweets can't even cite anything other than just saying he slanders them with no proof, of course. But normally what happens in the, the copyright process is you might get a claim. In this case, this was not a claim, it was a takedown. Claims are much more popular. I get claims on my videos all the time. And in that case, they just either block monetization or they share ad revenue on the video. And a recent example, I had the, uh, the team over at Team Coco uh, make a claim on one of my recent Velma videos because I used a quick 10 second clip of an interview on the Conan show between Velma's creator that was back in 2015. And believe it or not, I filled out the initial dispute, which is in this part of the process. And believe it or not, they actually released the claim. They read what I said, they thought it was fair, and they released the claim. It doesn't, doesn't happen often, but it does work sometimes. And for anyone in that situation, it's worth taking a stern but respectful approach to saying, hey, I think this is fair use and you explain how you used it, how much of the work you use, and that you're not hurting their company or taking away money from them from using this transformative work, okay? But for Kyo's sake, we're past all this. We're in this appeal and takedown process at the end, which is when you're getting into the scary territory here, okay? So what you can do at this point, and what Kyo's gonna have to do with every single one of these videos, is make a counter notification. Basically, he's gonna have to say that he meets all the legal requirements for his uh, the videos he made covering the Niji Sanji stuff. Okay, he's going to say they has fair use. Now, it's important to mention that this is a pretty recent development when it comes to fair use and copyright takedowns. But YouTube doesn't just look at U.S. law here in these factors. They actually do consider the law of all the parties involved. And I'm no master of Japanese law, but clearly based on my own experience and the experience of other content creators, Japanese law in terms of copyright is much tighter than US law and most international law. And oddly, the only time it's really been considered or this process used of combining both laws of each parties was the totally not Mark situation where he got copyright takedowns from Toei Animation. They actually did the reverse. It started with Japanese law and they said, you know what, interesting, we'll take that into consideration, but we're also gonna consider US law and YouTube law or YouTube policy. And that's how he got a lot of his videos reinstated. So in this case, yes, they're gonna make the argument that under Japanese law, that's tighter, maybe he has less of a case, but he has a very good chance using the traditional laws and comparing the two and meeting some sort of a middle ground. Now, here's, like I said, the scary part. You make this claim saying, I am taking a step, which is actually considered a legal step by saying that you are not violating any of these policies and laws. They now have the claimant, in this case, Niji Sanji, 
now has 10 U.S. business days to reply with evidence of legal action taken to keep the content at issue from being reinstated on YouTube. To read between the lines, they have to file an actual lawsuit against you. And that is a pretty scary thing. Obviously, it's why these companies get away with this stuff because they get to this step and people are like, oh my God, I don't want to go to court. I don't want to get in legal trouble. And then they back away and either accept the takedown or they just panic and they don't know what to do. And in this case, I got to tell you from my own personal experience from j dealing with Japanese companies who have made these similar takedowns in my videos and companies like MiHoYo, who th you think are these massive, scary corporations, they're a lot wimpier than you think. They file these claims like bullies. They expect you to get nervous and accept whatever happens because you're afraid of legal action, when in reality, they're just as scared of the legal action as you because is this really worth an international copyright lawsuit? Absolutely not. That's a huge headache for them. So they're very scared to do these things too. They just hope you accept your fate and move on. Now, like I said, he has actually had 10 more videos taken down and now has four copyright strikes against his channel. And I'm going to do my best to share this message. Um, I'm going to link the tweet to his first one, this one right here, in the description. Go give it a like, give it a retweet, spread the message, and hopefully YouTube can resolve this. I saw that YouTube was responding to some of his posts, which is a good start, and hopefully they immediately recognize that this is a misuse of their system to bully Kyo. And I don't know, maybe make an example out of him for some reason. That's all I can think of in this situation. I mean, what kind of a precedent does this set? That these companies can abuse the copyright system to take down videos sharing public information that is critical of their talents? That's a terrible precedent. I mean, what does that say about Niji Sanji as a whole? It's a very bad look. In a week, where Niji Sanji is having a very hard time dealing with their public image. This is the worst thing they could ever do. It looks, it makes them look pretty desperate. That's all I can say. And again, you have the people in the quote retweet celebrating this, not realizing this is a terrible step and really just promotes censorship and bullying. But of course, those things are always okay when it targets people you don't like without knowing that they're actually hurting a lot more people than just Kyo in this situation who are going to be used in this sort of copyright system bullying that uh, companies like Niji Sanji are getting way too comfortable doing. So again, follow the link in the description, give it some support, and hopefully something comes out of this. And hopefully... It ends with Kyo, because if they go beyond this, I can't imagine the shitstorm they're going to be facing for abusing the system like this. But we're going to see what happens, and uh, yeah, leave all your thoughts in the comment section down below. Hope you guys enjoyed the video, and I'll see you guys next time.